This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with guitarist Holger Marx and vocalist Jutta Weinhold of the German heavy metal act Velvet Viper. If I knew absolutely nothing about Velvet Viper, how would you describe the band's music to me? Strong, heavy, powerful, with a lot of melodies. And um, yeah, with passion and passion, and yeah, all all we need. And I'm I'm a so-called old rock and roll pioneer. I started many many years before 1969, <laughs> and I'm still into this rock roots where I grow with up and um, yeah, and Holger and I and the whole band, we try to make the music naturally, no playback shows. Uh, we just sing and we play just the one, the, the way we do it in a second. And this is Velvet Viper. And it means the words, the lyrics are literature, fantasy, my mythologies and uh, yeah, sages. And all this kind of stuff I like to things I like to read are the same things I like to sing about it. So 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 far so good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Olga, <laughs> is there anything that you want to add to the sound of Velvet Viper? Well, I guess it's a classic 80s metal with a lot of heavy guitar riffs and powerful female vocals. Um yeah, and the long songs, and long guitar parts, and um, yeah, we we are four four guys on stage. Don't use any keyboards. It's just classic heavy metal, <laughs> like like right all. Yeah. yeah, what it should be. I think making making playback shows in a concert is, is this is not the way it goes. We play, we just play the way the way we are. And we don't need any samples or yeah, playback things live. So we just do it the way we are. And I think this is this is good. This is the way I come from. I mean Holger and the band are much, much half the half this old than I am. They're very young. But <laughs> I'm I'm a so called, I always say old rock and roll Indian. And um yeah, I, I still stick to this old kind of music the way to do it so That's the history it. the history of velvet viper goes back to at least 1990 even further back if you count when it was called zed yago uh you guys were on the hiatus from 1992 to 2018 w what happened during those years it was a big tragedy the end of zed yago we had a big fight in the band and i lost i just lost my invention that I created Santiago, but I lost it because I didn't have a private copyright. And that's the way I, yeah, I, I couldn't go on with Velvet Vibe, with, with Santiago. And that's the way we, I, I continued with Velvet Viper 1990, 1991. And yeah, and then, yeah, many, many things were happening with lawyers, and all this shit, you know, it was terrible. It really, it was, it, it was really a, a bad time for me. And of, oh, cause my baby died, no, and said Yago was my baby, and and yeah, I lost it, no, because when you when you form a band, when you build a band, you don't think you, you wanna uh, you you wanna reach the world, and you don't think about paragraphs or, or, or be we net man das paragraph. Oh. Contracts, but yeah, and, and you just go on and do it, and then you find out, okay, <laughs> trouble comes around, and uh, yeah, and so it was the whole. The, I think it is the rock and roll trouble that hit so many other bands too. So I was not alone <laughs> in this case. It happened to me, and I, it was it was a bad time and it was a tragedy for me, but. Um, I never give up. I never will. And I always finish things I start. So I'm still on the road and I work now with Holget eight, eight years. I met him 2015 
And I thought, okay, mm -hmm. this would be a guy. I can make it honestly for, for sure again. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, and so we started. And, and I, I guess yeah. in excuse me in in um, 92 when you when you stopped uh, with the first version of Velvet Viper um it was the grunge era and it became really difficult um going on with that style of music or growing a band a second time and you Utah was really fed up i guess um yeah. and then um yeah and did some more You didn't play any songs. You had a solo band, Jutta Weinhold band, um, for a couple of years, and you. But she never played the Santiago stuff because it was so hard for her yeah. to to even sing the words of her songs. Yeah, I had to um, cry always, and I got. I, the I, I guess in 2010 or something, you you started um, doing the songs, even even some of them. You know. And, I, 2010, I wrote a book, 1919, uh, after this split with Santiago. I took one year and writing a fantastic story, using all the, the lyrics of Santiago and all the things I had in my head, and I wrote a book about it. The Daughter of the Flying Dutchman on Search for Fantasy. And this I wrote on at this time, you know, and being... Creative, creative, creative. It helps. So, it helps a lot. So for all the listeners now, if you get problems, just try to write it down. Be creative, because it helps. It helps a lot to take away the darkness. You know, to take away the bad things. And so it worked with me. And twenty thousand and ten. Um, I, 2010. I, yeah, 2010. <laughs> I, I uh, um, um, released the book, and from this time on, when I had it in my hand and I wrote it, and I was so, oh man, what a crazy thing is, what a cr crazy ideas I had at this time. Um, from this time on, I sang my the 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 the, the nut, the Knoten war geplatzt. And sometimes uh, it's hard to translate it. Yeah. Anyway, the, I came to the point, and now I sing that Yago again. And we had the first, the first festival, and uh, after years and years and years for the, for a big metal audience. And you know what? We went on stage and we sang that Yago from the Twilight Zone, and the people joined the singing, and sang with me the verse and the uh, and the chorus. And I stood on the stage and, and I thought, okay, Jutta, if I die now, so it is okay, because nothing goes bigger than, than this moment. It was just, yeah, it was ah, too much. I got, now I got goosebumps when I'm <laughs> thinking about it. Really, George, it was incredible. It was so, so, such a feeling, you know, yeah. I, find, mm. I couldn't find the words for it. But from this time on, it was clear that I um, go on with metal and uh, start, start starting it again. And then a few years later, I met Holger. And, um, I, I joined in 2015, right? Um, and we did two or three years, just old school shows playing all the Zediago songs. Mm. And then we decided to two new albums and uh, we already got four of them by now <laughs> because they got better all the time and the new one um, is nothing compares to metal is I guess our best we have really good reviews um, we're really happy about how that came out yeah and now here we are <laughs> you know making music you don't do it from this moment to the next moment you, you have to come together and you have to get this This, the spirit, not alone. You have to get it all together to, to build up music and to, to 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 know each other. Because music isn't a thing uh, you can, you can't make it on the computer desk. Yeah, you have to feel it and you have to bring all those things uh, into this to the music. And uh, this means you have to know your your partnerships and your colleagues and your friends to to make it. Yeah, to make it. 
to make rock music. <laughs> you know, well, to- I would say that <laughs> since you're pairing with Holger, you have had your most creative period and you have certainly made that musical bond that you speak of because since 2018, Velvet Viper has released practically an album a year. And here we are. On your on August 25th, which was just a few days ago, you released Nothing Compares to Metal on Massacre Records. Um, you two guys, obviously, primary songwriters in the band. Uh, you mentioned the great reviews. I've seen the great reviews. So obviously, that's got to be making you smile a bit. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it should really be important for someone who's creative, but we we're very happy about it anyway. <laughs> We just take it the way it comes, you know. It might, it may, may I, I don't know how it's in California, but in Germany, it's it's quite hard for the music right now and uh, for musicians and so. But we had this disease, Corona. <laughs> you around. may have heard of it. <laughs> and and, uh, and so um, yeah, we had bad times. You no, know? and I tell you something, a concert, no. Is for me like a young pronoun. Fountain of youth. Fountain of youth. I drop in and I stay there for a long, long while. That's why I really need gigs and I need concerts and I need to the club. We love clubs. We love to play in, in clubs. It, it must be the big festival. It's okay when they are, but we, we love also clubs. And it, yeah, it gives me all, it gives me a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, that's that keeps me going on, you know. That's good. It's a great well, thing because now in October I'm going to be 76. Heißt das so 76? Yes, right. Okay. And I think it's not bad. So I can tell all the ladies, hey, don't worry, just go on. You can do whatever you want to do. If you really want to do it, then nothing can stop you. And just if you uh, feel like something is stopping you, just think about me. Be going on. Well, I think you found the solution because I wouldn't have said 76. (laughs) But let's talk a little bit about the music. Let's talk about one of your singles out now. Nothing compares to metal. What inspired that song? Well, The lyrics are obviously Utah's. um, Yeah. And uh, the song is it? It's a down tuned song we do sometimes do those it's, it's i guess it's pretty heavy for for our spectrum um and we um i guess you had this line nothing compares to metal that was the, the basis um and i came up with this idea that to have it really stand out alone with the with the choir and i guess we we built the rest around it you know i i believe i believe metal I started with Santiago, 1985, and I never w- wanted to do something else because metal is something else. Metal is has a spirit. This year we were in Wacken, and it is such. It's a spirit that is, uh, this is worldwide the biggest metal festival, and it has the biggest spirit you ever, you, you you even can think about it. Really, it's really something else. And I love the metal audience, the, the public, the guys and boys that come by train when you play uh, you, your shows. And yeah, they're, 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 they are with you and they get with you older and older and older. <laughs> and it's great. It's the truest audience I ever met in my life. And I, I had a few gigs going on in the 70s and in the 60s and so but. The metal audience is for me the best, and nothing compares to metal. It's just the Liebeserklärung, Holger. A love letter. Yeah, a love something. letter. A love letter <laughs> to this music. Yeah, that's it. And metal, you know, with metal music, you're able to 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 make great lyrics. You can't. You never could do with pop music or something like that. And mm-hmm. you, you can sing about Mary Stewart and Macbeth and Parsival and the Flying Dutchman. And you can use all those uh, classical themes, Mary Stewart, for example. And uh, yeah, it's good. And I, I, I love, I, I like this. And I think, I, I think 
songs I like or the themes I like, I sing the best. So I never can sing something what's not me, you know. And I I believe, okay, party music, many many bands playing party party music, music for parties, this is okay, but um, I mean, not everybody has to go this way. It's always good in the music if, if, if there are different ways uh, bands go or, or musicians go. And I think it's good for the music to be vielfältig. Diverse. <laughs> yeah. I, I could mention, I uh, should mention that Jutta writes lots and lots of lyrics. Ah! And most of the time, in our songs, we only have half of what she orig originally had written, um, and we have to cut out so much, or we would have ten-minute songs all the time. <laughs> and it's it's, it's awesome. Um, um, it's, I I always get those really lengthy um, vocal sheets, and, and I just pick the best lines to use in our songs. Um, maybe you should make another book with all the. Um, complete yeah, lyrics to the song. Now, yeah, exactly. The first time I was really sad. You know, he came. <laughs> we have to cut. We have. We don't. We we don't play your opera now. We just make a song. So too too many words and too many lyrics. You, you we we loosen the beat. We loosen the groove and and we loosen the rhythm and we can't. We should make this. No? And then I say, okay, okay, Holger. <laughs> Okay, you're right, and I cry <laughs> but, a tear but, in one eye, <laughs> but, and, and, and we cut a few things and make it happen with uh, working with the music. Mm. And, but on the new album, all the songs are at least five minutes long again. I don't know how this happens. And some are six or seven minutes. We we never intend to do that. Um, some people ask us, oh, what's up with your songs? And and we even had a producer this time helping us and condensing the best things, but it's still um, all those long songs. I don't know. It's it's if, I mean, we, if we start writing a song, it, it always goes in some direction, and before we reach the end, it's yeah. a long time. You can cut a few a few words and a few lines and so, but the main thing must be there, you know, and that's why some songs are long i think it's okay when people take time to listen to music you know uh, we don't expect songs three minutes and uh, then go on to the next song three minutes and then the next song three minutes and then the next one i, I think a, a song needs needs a time for even for the for the listeners to get into it and if you don't want to get into it so Velvet Viber would not be <laughs> the right the right thing for you. I mean, I we, we ex expect taking a, a, a bit of um of like some kind uh, attention from the, from the listeners. No? That's why music is made to 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 get attention from the people no? to listen. What does it mean and, and what they say and listen to the guitars and, and listen to the riffs and listen to the solo soli and the drama and yeah, and see what's music all about. It's not just it it is not just hush 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 hush. Is that what that's hush 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 hush? No way to say that in English, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not just uh, here in here, here in and here out. You know, it has yeah, to in, stand in there. one year out the other. Yeah, I guess. It has yeah. to stand there. There for a while and here for a while and here for a while. And I mean that's why we make music to I guess it, it would be smarter on, on Spotify if you had just said two minute songs. I read it somewhere. Because after after thirty seconds or so you don't get paid anyway. <laughs> and we're really stupid to have long yeah. songs. <laughs> We totally backdated. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. It's 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 okay. No? And first of all, you have to like what you do, and if you like it, and if you're satisfied with it, and if you know this is the best I could do in this moment, then there's time to go out and hope that people find 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 it and and think the same way. 
if we like it, people can like it. We can transport it. No? And yeah, and it works. It, it works. It's good. Rock and roll is bigger than all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. That's it. And th therefore, da ordnen wir uns unter. Mm, that's our rule, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, a great line, I think. It fits. Why don't you um, tell me a little bit about what, it, what inspired the lyrics for your other single, Invisible Danger? Well, it's not about a specific danger. I think it's um, a combination of the COVID-19 and right-wing conspiracies and uh, democracy being in danger and yeah. um, all that in one song. It's yeah. not really about one special thing, just about a feeling that we're kind of in danger, I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. This is uh, your first album to have songs that contain German lyrics. So I, I, I guess I'd ask, there must have been something important about these specific lyrics that you put in the title that you had to keep them in your native of German. Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I, I have already a few years on my back. I know it for, uh, so before I took 10 minutes to make makeup and all the things. And now I need 20 minutes. You know, times ch time changing, <laughs> and no, and 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 um, es kommt die Zeit is just um, private that private thoughts of my life, and of this what I'm doing and what I'm feeling, and it's a song. It's a, I, I never wrote private lyrics in my life. I never. I always into other stuff. No, but this is this is something I I thought the time is right to write something about me, about my thoughts, what I have in case of music and metal and being on stage and look into the pictures and <laughs> be uh, satisfied with it or not. And uh, yeah, get, go on with, with, with such thoughts. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's kind of about getting older, I guess. Um, it's some of the lines are, um, you look in the mirror and you don't see the person you once were and you look at old magazines and you don't recognize yourself. Um, yeah, but that song was uh, took a long, long time to be ready to be released. We had one version of it recorded actually in 2018 for our first album after the long break um, and we threw that away completely because we didn't like it and then we pulled it back out of the drawer sometime last year and, and made completely new song for the lyrics and, and this time it worked <laughs> um, and, and we were happy with it um, yeah you know, you know it's so strange it is so hard if you sing German lyrics yeah you have to take care you have to be so carefully to not to end up in the in the pop music in germany they call it schlager and that's this is what we never want to do and i never i never uh, wanted to do this so we really work on this song uh, yeah uh, not to uh, and not to get the feeling to the to, to pop music and it was really hard that this mm -hmm. is hard, and, but oh, and also very strange. I mean, my English is not not really good because I never practice George. We, we always talk here in, in in German, and and and, and we talk German, and we meet meet people, German people. So it's it's a bit hard for me to talk because I'm, I'm a person who is so called speed freak, and I have nothing to say always. <laughs> But this kills me when I'm talking with you in in, in in English. But anyway, it sounds so strange. In English, I love the I like my voice and I like the sound. But it is so much, it's so different to sing in German for me. It sounds so strange and it sounds totally es klingt total anders. Mm -hmm. Really different. Yeah, the, the rhythm of, of German is completely different. Um 
and there are very few bands who have actually tried it um for that reason i i, I guess apart from rammstein there's no one really uh, successful in doing it um I because metal metal and german are, are really not a good combination yeah and so um that was one song in deutsch in german and uh, it's, it's, it's good, so it's enough. <laughs> that one is enough. You brought in Michael Ire of Gamma Ray and Primal Fear mm. and The Unity to produce this album. I actually interviewed him last week. Uh, mm-hmm. How did you Great. get Michael involved in producing the album? Um, he's an old friend of us. He yeah. sometimes plays the drums for us when, when our main drummer, Michael, is ill or something. Our understudy. We know M- Michael, Michael Ehre, Michael Ehre, Sean, many, many years. I know him many years. Uh, and often I, we work together with Metallium. Maybe you still remember this band. And yeah, we know him. And he always plays drum with us when our drummer, Michael, from has no time. You know, it's, those days, it's like the musicians... No, no. If, if you're not in the first league, it's really hard for a band to survive financially, financially. And so all the musicians have to do other works and other jobs and other uh, playing other bands and other projects because it's, you have no no uh, possibility to to survive with only one band. Maybe we. As I said, maybe you in the first league, then it w- will work. But uh, if not, so everybody has other jobs to do to pay family and faith and kids and yeah, what 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 else? Holger, I know that you have hmm. a side project. Uh, is it Moon Day Six? Moon Day Six, right, right. Um, is it some old school pals of mine actually? Um, who all ended up as professional musicians and um how we do kind of mm, classic rock um and yeah as Jutta said um i play in uh, three or four bands i guess um because, and, and and michael michael our drummer does a lot of um um teaching um i guess a, a lot of bands um do that today and yeah but we we started with talking about michael array um and uh, he helped us really a lot with the drum arrangement because i always do drums on the computer and program them but he um he has a real drum (laughs) he could really uh, uh, make that a lot of better um a lot better and um he bought he uh, it is always good to have someone from, from with an outside view to tell you which parts of songs actually make sense and which which maybe uh, could be a little shorter um we produced the last album cosmic Healer, on our own and we kind of had the feeling that something was missing the one one outside view i guess um and this time we're really happy with how how that came about and we recorded the drums at um, at Michael Michael's home even, um, uh, and he is all set up for his gamma ray and primary stuff. That was so that was really um, practical. And yeah, and he yeah yeah and was, was, was mir gerade einfällt um, Kai Hansen from Halloween gamma ray you know george ne? he 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 produced our first album the new first album of velvet viper respike finem respike finem this is a, a creek let's enough let's enough i guess whatever you do do it wisely and consider the end this is the meaning of respice finem respike finem latin and kai produced this this, uh, this album with us and he played a huge solo on, on this song and this song is 12 minutes long mm. 12 minutes it's good and it's really good no Holger yeah it's awesome and okay. um and Please. Michael Array even played the drums on that album yeah. I guess if I remember correctly because yeah. our we, we we wanted to play a Velvet Viper with Booby 
Bubi the Schmied, the drummer of Santiago, the old drummer, but he died at the 1st of January 2018. He died before we went to the studio. He just died and he get to, uh, never woke up in the morning. Yeah. So we had to see what can we do. And we asked Mich Michael to play the drums and he did it. And he, yeah. So it all comes together. I mean, we have all friends and we live in the same country. And why should we help each other? Hmm? It's all about rock music and we all do the same thing and we all have the same things in head and in in the in, in the in, in in the heart in, in heart and so we help each other. That's what friends do, I guess. Hmm? You you mentioned the camaraderie that came about with your performance at Vacken this year. Uh I yeah. wanna know about the rain at Vacken and how that affected your performances. The areas for for all the bands and and the tech technical stuff, they were pretty pretty okay and paved, but the parts that were really in bad shape and uh, drowned in mud. There was the, the camping areas. That's why they couldn't uh, have that many people attending the festival. As I think it was fifty thousand instead of eighty five thousand. Um, and we we watched some of that. Uh, we w went around to see it, and and they had tractors pulling out all the cars all the time if someone wanted to leave. And oh, and there was a pretty weird smell in the air from 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 all the mud, and um, and the people all had uh, had mud up to their knees, and and, and I even saw a wheelchair down to. A half and a half a meter, what's that? People you know, join the show, yeah. <laughs> People join the feeling <laughs> of backing, and it can uh, comes rain or shine or mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they're, they're just doing it, and that's why I love them. I love these people, they are, they are so great, and they don't give a damn which weather is that they just come, they want to see the bands, they want to have see the show, and they want to get the spirit and the feeling. and I mean that's it, no? That that's it, and this is all about the music. And yeah, super. Backen was backen was really toll. Something we, we mm -hmm. we've been there before, Holger, mm -hmm. and played on on a big stage. What do you guys have lined up for future gigs? Is it going to be mostly festival appearances, or are you going to do the club shows where they're a little more intimate? More club shows. Two, yeah. two two festivals we have, one Bremen yeah. in Bremen. You know Bremen, <laughs> wonderful city <laughs> on the on the, on the North Sea. Sea. <laughs> yeah, we have we have uh, quite a few club shows this fall, and I guess we'll do some more of, of the festivals next summer. Yeah, um, this summer was a little early for the new album, um. So maybe next summer we'll do more of the. Hopefully, and, of the bigger festivals too. Yeah, we we have a great we have a, a great festival in the in April is the no playback show festival. No playback show. There are only only bands who don't use playbacks for their show. And I think this is a great name. Name, huh? Back to the roots, George. <laughs> you know, we 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 have to stop a bit this digital digital things in music we don't have to use this i mean it's okay if it's there but not not everybody has to has to use it some people can just stick stuck on to the to, to the roots to the rock roots you know when i grow up i heard Janis joplin in the 60s i had i had a school a school band and i heard yeah Janis joplin and jim morrison and and stones and deep purple and lit zeppelin and I love Bob Dylan when he's playing his acoustic guitar only. And uh, yeah, and I grew up with this. And then I started 69 with hair, being a hippie, and I loved it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's good. I played this from 69 till 73. Four years we go on with being, let the sunshine in. <laughs> and then I played Jesus Christ Superstar, and that was also a very, very fine thing. And 
actually for me, I come from the countryside, you know, and I learned nothing. And this musical uh, work was a, uh, was like a school for me. I learned so many things there about singing, about the technique, about breathing, about all the things you need to sing. And this, I started with with this uh, <laughs> fifty more than fifty years ago, and it's good. It still keeps me going on and. Mm, uh, 30 years or I work in, in a music school here in Hanstedt where I, where I live and I have a gospel choir, a rock gospel choir core, a rock gospel choir. And this is good. 20, 25 singers and we're singing rock ballads and a few gospels, not really sacral, sacral. Wie nennt man das? Sakral? Not your church choir type. Not church choir, more, more, more into rock music, because that's what I know to teach. That, that's what I, what I can teach and, and what I feel, and that's what, what we're doing. And it works good to, to have young people who want to get into music and want to get into singing, because singing keeps you young and healthy. You know, you don't need any any medicine medicine uh, if you do this. And it's, it's really I, I just can it's empfehlen. Ich kann, Recommend that. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> so important. To eat sing. your veg, eat your vegetables, kids. <laughs> and, and don't drink too much beer. I know that you guys have been super productive since you reformed in 2018. Like I said, an album almost every year. Are you working on, even though this one just came out, are you working on the next Velvet Viper album? Yeah, maybe something, something live. People ask you for uh, live, live uh, uh, records. Um, yeah, maybe. My, we see, but now we have the last six years. We have four new Velvet Viper uh, CDs, mm -hmm. and I guess the the world can go on to buy them, <laughs> yeah. and then I, and then yeah. we go on and make another one. <laughs> yeah, we always write um, in a very short time frame. I guess I, I don't collect uh, ideas all the time. I if we decide to do a new album i would sit down and and make oh, seven or eight demos at at one time with all the stuff that's in my head at that time i know a lot of people have um piling uh, pile up demos over the years and use them when they need i don't work that way i don't know why as uh, there's a time when i am have a productive Productive state of mind, and then, yeah, then I yeah. write lots and lots of songs. Yeah. And, and I, I'm always a pre a prepared with uh, themes for for lyrics and uh, for for new stuff and so so. Yeah, we will see what's happened. But first of all, we have nothing compares to metal. And yeah. yeah. And we're very happy with it, and I'm kind of intimidated yeah. by by all the good reviews because now if we if we would decide to do another one, we would still have to be better. And well, we'll see. Yeah. We we only release another one if we think we can top that, I guess. Well, you did great with this one. Those are all the questions I have for you, Yuda and Holger. The new album by Velvet Viper is nothing compares to metal. Out now on Massacre Records. Great album. I wish you the best of luck with everything, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you so much for having us. And I want to say <laughs> goodbye. Hello. This is this is um, our mascot. Mascot? <laughs> mm. Mascot is, is right? Mascot? And she wants to say hello, George, and bye-bye. <laughs> Well, thanks again, and I really appreciate it, and uh, it was great talking to you. It really was. Bye-bye.